Here is your video for Lesson 4 where you're going to learn a lot of fun things about changing fonts that you perhaps haven't had a chance to practice. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open a data file and we're going to go over this process again because some students are a little confused by how to work with them and how to save them. The data file that we want to open is from Lesson 4. Once again, navigate to the Biz Ed directory. Once you're there, we're going to go into Word. We're in Lesson 4 this time, and the document that we want to open is Flyer. Now, what many of you are doing is you are saving these data files, uh, or you're overwriting them, I should say, and so they become either an error or you're saving your example to the data files, and we don't want to do that. We want to always save the data files to your directory. The computer remembers the last directory you've used. This is the incorrect one. If it says Word and Lesson 4, that's incorrect. So we need to navigate to your directory, and once we're there, uh, put it into the computer apps folder that you've created uh, so that you have it in your directory and no one else can use it. We're going to save this particular file as Racetrack Flyer. All right, and now we're going to have fun with changes. Now, whenever you are curious about what a particular uh, font might look like as you're working with it, you need to have some text selected. So from my Home tab, I'm going to go to Select and Select All to highlight everything. And then what I can do is I can mouse over different files and just get a little peek to what that particular font looks like without actually changing it. So I can choose a font style that works for me. I don't particularly care for that one, but um, I'm going to go ahead and choose Algerian, which is a little um, over the top perhaps, but maybe I'm going to go back to the um, Calibri, which was the default here for this particular one, and use that one even though it hasn't been changed. Um, the uh, I'm following the step by steps in the book, which begin on page two, a page eighty two, and go on to page eighty three, and they actually want us to choose the Arial rounded for this particular one. So I'll go ahead and select that. Now, once I've done that, while I still have something highlighted, I can practice seeing what different font sizes would look like. Let's just grab the first line of text, which happens to be the t uh, the title. And uh, with this now, if we go to the sizes and we mouse over, we can see what those different sizes look like as far as how giant we want something to be or not be. Uh, let's choose a size 16 for this as we're going through it. Now with that still highlighted, don't unhighlight un un it. Keep that first line of text highlighted. And we're going to work with font color a little bit. When we're doing this, you'll notice there are something called theme colors and something called standard colors. And when you're working with the exercises in your book, you're going to be asked to use specific hues. And so you've probably never paid attention to this before. So now uh, what we're asked to do is just change this to a standard blue color. Whenever it says standard, you look in this section. Whenever it says theme, you look in this section. But here's the standard light blue, and we're going to select that. And the next thing, um, if we wanted to take a peek at these using the theme colors, uh, if, if we are asked to use a red accent too. And if I mouse over some of the reds, that would give me the file name for what that particular font color is. It just so happens the very top one is red accent too. Next, we're asked to uh, select the word recycle. And remember, if you do a double click over a word, you can highlight it or you can click and drag. And we're supposed to change this to just a standard green. And once again, standard section, just selecting the green, not the light green in this case, but the standard green. So now we now have green text for recycle. Next, you are very familiar with changing different um, things like bold and underline and, and those features. Once again, when we highlight a word, and we're going to choose schedule right from the um, ribbon here we can choose bold we can italicize and we can underline we can add a lot of things to this text 
And what we're going to do is, um, it, once we have them, while we still have this selected, if we change our mind and say, for example, we don't want to italicize something, uh, that goes away, okay? And if, or if we don't want to um, underline anymore, we can take that away also as we're going through it. Um, we're going to look for the, uh, the name of this company, RIP. Tarber Stock Championship Race, and we're going to practice changing the underline feature with it. So first we have to add an underline. Once we do that, then we're able to go in and add all of these different underline features, and as you mouse over them, you get a chance to see what they look like. We are asked to do the double underline in this case. Once we've added that double underline, we can also go in and change colors. And we're going to go ahead and change this again to red accent 2 to add that to the underlying color. So just like the title here was this red accent 2, now our underline is the red accent 2 as we're going through it. Next, you may or may not have worked with any um, uh, font um, special things that you can do as you're working with a particular document. We're going to go ahead and highlight the title again, Sage Stone Racetrack, and we're going to open this dialog box that's that's in the lower right hand corner which gets us into some extra kinds of things that we can do. So we're going to go ahead and add a shadow and we're going to add small caps to this particular uh, example here as we're working with it. Okay, so now all that's done is made our title stand out for us. Once again, we open the dialog box right here in order to be able to get back to some of those special features when we're working with them. Next is the highlight feature, and I know that you've used highlight before. You can pre-select highlight by coming here and selecting the particular color that you want. Now we need to deselect the title first because we don't actually want that uh, highlighted in this example. But I, if I want to go ahead and just choose yellow or if I wanted to choose any of these other colors, whatever color I choose, notice that your cursor changes to what looks like a highlighter with a little eye beam. And then you can just choose the particular paragraph that, or sentence or whatever it might be that you want to highlight. Um, and in this example, uh, we're going to highlight the sentence for only an additional $5 a person. You can get this admission. Very exciting. Okay, so we can do it that way. This will stay on until we turn it off. Okay, if we're done highlighting, all we have to do is deselect this highlight button. Now you know you could also highlight text and then go in and click on to add the highlight too. That's another way to do it. But sometimes it's nice just to have the eye beam available with the highlight and you can go over multiple things at, at any point in time. Now if you've highlighted something and you've changed your mind and you can see I highlighted more text than I needed to, but if I highlighted something and I know want it there, I don't want it there, I can go back and add the no color piece. Okay. Now we've created this fabulous uh, title here that we've added some changes to and we want to format the rest of the headings the same way. There's a wonderful shortcut to do that. This is called the Format Painter. Now if I just do a single click on the Format Painter, um, let's see, there we go. My mouse changes to the, when I whenever I'm over text, the eye beam with the paintbrush and I can paint one time but it goes away. Okay. But if I have the text highlighted that I want to copy the formatting to a bunch of places, I'm going to double click on Format Painter and then I'm able to paint over multiple sections of my document and I, I've grabbed all the headings now. And then to turn that off, I once again select this. Okay, so we're going to add your name at the end of the document so that we can uh, do something with your name in just a moment here. Okay, next we're going to work with styles and some of the extra things that you can do with these styles that are available to you here, all within the Home tab. Within the Styles feature, we are going to um, go ahead and... and um, just have our, doc, our uh, cursor somewhere within the first line of our document here. And 
normal is automatically selected and we've worked with that week before where we've practiced between normal and no spacing. We're going to go ahead and, and, and not make the changes to that. Um, I'm going to head back up here for a moment and um, once again, as I mouse over here, you can see that it's changing the appearance of my title based on which particular style I have selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the More button because there are more styles that are available, and you will be asked to do this in your practice. We're asked to actually select the title style for the title of this particular text. You see that also adds a underline for us, which is kind of a neat feature. And... Um, we're going to make a change now to schedule. We're going to change this to a heading one. I personally liked the uh, formatting that we already created, but we're just practicing here. So we're going to make this be a heading one. We're going to make the prices be a heading one. We're going to make seating be a heading one. I believe that's all of our titles. Yep. So now uh, we've changed that. We're going with a little bit more of a blue theme as we're going through it. Okay, next we're going to come to under schedule here and we're going to select the underlying text, this Rip Tarber Stock Championship race that we've underlined and we're going to change the style of this and what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the intents we have these different intense options here as we're looking at them and we're going to choose Intense E which does the blue um, information for us just to make that stand out a little bit more than what we have. Now next we're going to grab the yellow highlighted text and we're going to um, add an emphasis to that one also and we're going to add this emphasis to it that doesn't take the highlight off it just changes the appearance of that. Next when you're working with a document sometimes you want to change something called a theme and these are kind of fun. So if you go to your page layout tab, you go to the themes option and uh, you can see that when we mouse over here, not only are we changing, you know, the appearance of the document, we're also changing color schemes depending on what we're working with. Let's go ahead and grab this opulent one so we have kind of some maroon colors going on. And um, that's kind of a fun way when you're working with it. Now, when once you've made some changes, you can go in and make some additional font changes and save this style if this is a style you want to use again as you're going through it. So if, for example, um, I'm going to grab this first paragraph here, and if I want to make some additional changes, I'm going to go ahead and, and bold it, and I'm going to open up the font, and I'm going to change this to the small caps piece. Um, also, so once I've done that, I'm going to click on OK, and now I'm going to say, all right, styles, I want to use this again. So I'm going to save it as my own style, and I'm going to call this style important. And I get a little preview of what that style looks like. So I name that style. Once I've named it, then you can see that important now appears as one of the styles that I can work with. So if you, we want to make your name important now, we can highlight it, select the important style, and boom, that, that information goes on. Now, we've created important. That's our very own. If we change our mind and we don't want to have that one there anymore, we or, um I just took cleared is all I did. And so um, what we're going to do next is to make any changes here is we're going to come and if we change our mind on this, we can click anywhere in a paragraph where we've applied it and we can say clear and it'll go back to what it originally was. And um, you know, we can do the same thing with any font or format change that we've added. If we change our mind here, we can clear the formatting once again and it'll take that away. Now that also took the bullets out of this, so I don't think that's necessarily one that we'll want to do. But regarding important, if we, do, we no longer want it, we can remove it from the gallery or we can keep it there. It'll stay saved to your hard drive. So that is the information for lesson four. I'm going to go ahead and remove this style. That's the information for for lesson four and uh, so you can go ahead and save the changes that you've made to this document because once again we saved it to your 
individual directory. You should see your name highlighted now, not the biz ed directory when you make those changes. And you're ready to move forward and begin the lesson for assignments.